what is meant by a substance's specific latent heat of fusion, and describe an experiment to measure water's specific latent heat of fusion. So first of all, let's take a look at a definition of the specific latent heat of fusion. So specific latent heat of fusion is the energy absorbed or released. Now here's the important bit, which, well, it's all important really, but specific means per kilogram. So it's the energy absorbed or released per kilogram of substance, per kilogram of substance. So specific latent heat of fusion is the energy absorbed or released per kilogram of substance during the phase change from solid to liquid or liquid to solid. So we're talking about melting. If we're going from a solid to a liquid and we need to break bonds. To do that, we need to put energy in. So the specific latent heat of fusion is telling us how much energy do you need per kilogram of the substance to break those solid bonds and turn it into a liquid. And in the same way, if you are freezing a liquid or solidifying a liquid called solidification, then energy will be released as you make those strong solid bonds. And so the specific latent heat of fusion is the energy that's released for every kilogram of liquid that you freeze into a solid. So the equation for the specific latent heat of fusion is LF, subscript F, equals the energy released or absorbed divided by the mass of substance. So it's measured in joules per kilogram. And we've seen this before for the specific latent heat of vaporization. So this is exactly the same equation. It's just for the case of solid to liquid or liquid to solid. And this brings us to the equation then that the energy absorbed or released during solidification or uh, or melting equals the mass of substance multiplied by the specific heat capacity of fusion. And that's a useful equation to have up your sleeve. So on to the second part of the question, which is asking us to describe an experiment to measure water's specific latent heat of fusion. So here's the setup. We're going to heat up some ice. Now this ice is already at zero degrees Celsius. So it's at its melting point, and that's important. So we're going to put energy in through an electrical circuit and a, an electrical heater. We're measuring the voltage, the potential difference across the heater, and the current that's been supplied to the heater. And with those two measurements, and also the time that we heat the ice for, we can work out the energy that's transferred from the electrical circuit into thermal energy to the ice. That's going to melt the ice and the drops of water will collect in the beaker and we'll measure the mass change for a certain time of heating. So let's do a four step plan for this. So number one, we're going to heat the ice until it starts to melt. Heat the ice until it starts to melt. Now that's just going to bring it up to zero degrees Celsius because it might be a minus number. It might be minus three degrees Celsius when we start. 
Um, so that brings it up to, to zero degrees Celsius. Number two. So we then record the mass of the beaker and the water. The mass of the beaker plus water. That's already melted in there. There may not be much water in there to start with. And we'll call that M1. Part three is that we turn on the heat again. So we heat again for a time t. Now I'm just going to call it t for the moment. It depends what kind of apparatus you've got and how, how powerful the heater is. Um, it may be that you only need a couple of minutes to collect enough water to have a significant measurement, a significant change in mass. So we'll heat again for a time t and at the same time we'll be recording the heater voltage, the potential difference, and current. Great, number four, we'll stop heating. Stop heating and record mass and we'll call it M2. So we've stopped the heating and we've recorded the new mass that's of the water that's been accumulating in the beaker that's been melting. And then simply we can say well the energy supplied by the heater is equal to VI T voltage times current times time and we know that the specific latent heat of fusion is equal to the energy that we've had to supply to break all those solid bonds divided by the mass of of water which is the mass of ice that has melted and if we put those together we've got v times i times t oh yes forgot to say uh, we need to stop heating and record mass m2 so we can say that the mass of ice melted equals m2 minus m1 sorry forgot that bit so we know what the mass is now and it's over m2 minus m1 and that's how you would find the specific latent heat of fusion for water there is a little extra addition to this experiment which will make it more accurate because this ice is also absorbing heat energy from the room and it's the uh, the temperature of the room the 20 degrees celsius is that thermal energy is is getting to the ice as well so that will have an effect which we haven't taken into account in this calculation but in the next flashcard we will i'll see you then